Welcome back. Well, it got up to about 90 degrees today, so I have a fan on here, and that's why my hair is blowing around. Try to keep it in place. And Audie had a fan over where he was sleeping, which I turned off because it was making noise. So now he's over here where this fan is. Right now he's on the floor, but he'll probably be in my lap before we're through. So, yes, it's been a warm day, and a cat doesn't like that kind of heat. So he was lying on the settee on his back with his little paws up so that the breeze was on his belly. And right now he's whacking my foot with his tail just to make sure I know he's here. So today we are going to finish up the last uh, shopping trip I did at Bedford. And by the time you see this, I will have gone back because I got a lot of requests to, one, pick up that uh, jadeite measuring cup, and two, to check out all of the depression glass in that shop. And I'm going to do it with my little black light this time, so we'll see how much of it is radioactive. All right, we're going to take a look at the last of the last shopping trip when we come back. I took some film of the first shop that I, I'm going to show you in this particular video, and unfortunately, it came out on its side. It does that to me every now and then, and frankly, I really need to make a point of checking the film to make sure it's coming out okay, because this is not the first time I've come up with sideways film. But I do want you to see the things I picked up. So I'm going to show them to you here without the shopping film, which frankly is just as well because it was exceptionally noisy in that area of Bedford when I was there. So the first piece, let's take a look at this, $2. This is a celluloid jewelry box. I have not cleaned it yet. You can see the dust in the velvet lining. Well, it's velveteen, really. It was described as a man's jewelry box, which I think is a little sexist. It's sort of the assumption that a plain jewelry box like this and blue is only going to appeal to men. But in fact, I think it's very nice and I wouldn't mind using this as a jewelry box. Now, if you'll notice, it's, it's grubby. It needs to be cleaned. I just haven't done that yet. What I do with celluloid like this when it needs to be washed is I get a toothbrush and just get right in here into the little nooks and crannies and get it scrubbed out really well. Celluloid can take a pretty good washing. Um, with a piece like this, uh, and it's very nice. It doesn't have a lot of scratches. When they do have superficial scratching, you can take that out simply by using a metal polish. Uh, Brasso, for example, that just happens to be a nice cheap metal polish that's available everywhere. You can just buff the scratches right out and it will be great. And as I say, this one doesn't have much in the way of scratches. But here, let me show you this. You can see there is dirt that needs to be removed. So, $2, nice buy. Very happy to have that one. Um, these are all from the same shop, by the way. And the, this little shop is, I don't know what to say. Sometimes I go in there and I absolutely hit the jackpot. Other times, I'll stop there. Um, three, four times over the course of, you know, a, a week, 
two weeks, months, whatever, and come up empty handed every time. So it's always worth checking though. The next thing, uh, this is one of a pair of little white lusterware bulldogs from Japan. Uh, the two of them, they're a nice little set and they were four dollars and I just thought they were absolutely adorable. Let me see if I can get this to focus in. It's hard because it's white and it's luster wear, so it's reflecting the light, but they are just really cute. And for four dollars, I thought, mm, not staying behind. They're definitely coming with me. And the next piece, also Japan, this. And again, I'm going to have trouble because of the gold. The gold is reflecting the light. This is a beautiful little Noritake server. And I have seen pieces in the same pattern. Um, I've sold them through my Etsy shop. It's an especially beautiful pattern, a lot of gold with little sort of pinky coral highlights. Very nice piece really good condition. Um, and this was uh, $5. So I really felt like I was making out like a bandit. And the final thing I got here, Japan, it's a set of Japan salt shakers, uh, salt and pepper shakers. And we have this wonderful hand-painted design. Uh, this is clearly from around the 1920s, I would say. Uh, the design is that period when Art Deco was coming in and Art Nouveau was going out. So you see the sort of Nouveau Deco style. Um, a pair, I've just pulled out one to show you. They were four dollars for the pair. So it's a nice deal. And of course, they're a good size too. So again, glad to get this. So next up, uh, this just caught my eye. Two dollars. Well, of course, the price tag caught my eye. Really sweet little duck. All right, up to the second floor, $2, a very pretty little duck figurine. Actually, it's not all that little. Uh, I'm not sure how this sort of thing is going to do. You've either got to like the colors, you've got to like ducks, or you've got to like figurines. But for $2, oh, I can afford to take the chance. Something about that just really appealed to me. It's a good size. You saw it in comparison with my hand. By the way, now let me get over here. From here to here is eight inches. So just so you know, I use my hand as a point of reference when I'm filming so that you can see what it looks like. My hands are a little on the large side. Uh, not, not man hands. At least I don't think so but large so that, you know, when I hold my hand against it, it gives you some point of comparison so you can see how big they are. Uh, the duck was just, just a really nice piece. It's the sort of thing that I look at that and I think, mm, man cave. And a lot of people do collect ducks ducks are popular, especially around here where a lot of people are into country decorating. Ducks seem to blend in beautifully. It was the sort of piece that I was a little unsure about. I like it. Doesn't mean necessarily everybody else is going to fall in love with it, but for two dollars I can absolutely take the chance. So yeah, came home with me. Um, and then I went across, this was on the second floor of Bedford, by the way. I went across 
to another one of the little booths that was just across the aisle. Um, and usually I go through Paul's things first and then I scoot across the aisle. But this plate just really sort of jumped out at me. Well, here is another little I'm going to take a chance on it plate. Two dollars. It's marked America on the back. But when I turned it over, look at the crazing. This piece has a lot of age to it. And the color combination, this peach and green uh, with the blue, very interesting. Definitely worth taking a chance. I love the color combination uh, of that plate. I, it just, it really appealed to me. And I also love the crazing on the back. Um, the idea that it has America written on the back, I don't know what in the world that means. I'll probably have to do a little research and look it up. It's not the sort of porcelain, in this case it's stoneware, not the sort of porcelain I ordinarily uh, gravitate toward, but the colors were just so different and nice. So I thought mm, that is a piece, especially for $2, that I'm absolutely willing to take a chance on. And no, it's, I'm not going to turn that into a tidbit tray. I think that's the sort of piece that someone really might be interested in, especially because a lot of people like stoneware. I like stoneware. I, I like Chinese stoneware. Um, it's, it has the look of a substantial piece and I use my Chinese stoneware, not just to feed the animals with, but my dog's dishes were antique Chinese stoneware. And as most of you know, Audie had a beautiful old stoneware bowl until he went mouse hunting and that was loud and he skittered his bowl right across the counter onto the floor broke it um i do have another really nice stoneware bowl for him and if he's a good cat he'll get it but i use it this is not just the sort of thing that i set out on on a table for show um it, it just goes right into my working um, porcelain in the kitchen. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I figure I'm probably not the only person out there who really likes to have pretty things to cook with, to, you know, to use. Um, I don't mind having pretty things just sitting around being pretty. But I really like having pretty things that I can use. So anyway, that's why that came home with me. Um, now, next up, this is from the booth where, um, let's see. No, it isn't. I was going to say this is, that's coming up next. Um, this is from the booth that is next to the pig booth. And I, I don't mean that in a disparaging way at all. The booth is actually very well organized and very tidy. But for some reason, that dealer stocks a great many pigs. And they're just so cute in there. So I always think of that as the pig booth. Right next to the pig booth. And I have gotten some very, very interesting pieces in there in the recent past, including some really sweet little rose medallions. Uh, salt cellars. So let's take a look at these. This is a little booth. It's right next to the pig booth. Notice our shelf of pigs. And I picked up a celluloid bracelet in here last time I stopped by. Today it is going to be dishes. Uh, Two fifty dollars a piece. This one is, uh, oh, I'm looking at that thinking peony, Japan, um, let me see, 
I'm just going to tuck it under my arm. This one, $2.50, China. And again, $2.50. And I believe this is China also. Definitely coming home with me. It's actually a very good deal. These are great pieces. They are going to do very well in tidbit trays. So this was, yes, okay, yes, come on over. You can if you'd like. This was a nice little collection of Asian porcelain, all different styles. Um, the Thousand Flowers pattern, the traditional Chinese blue and white, you know, um, and just really nice. Those plates at two fifty dollars each, oh, yes, that was just, oh, I felt like I hit the jackpot. And as soon as I got those pieces, I turned around and found this. Same booth, Japan Lusterware. Uh, hard to show on film, but these colors are so bright. And what are we looking at here? Three fifty. Oh yes, thank you. Now, that lusterware cup and saucer is in fact going to become a little cup and saucer tidbit tray, but it was just so sunny and and bright and lively and the the green and the yellow. I just I really like that, in part because uh, Colleen Staver, and I'm sure you're all familiar with Colleen, she runs the Sumi's Angels Facebook page. Colleen has been making some new tidbit trays, and one of them in particular was just so sunny. It was a little happy face cup, and, and I just thought, mm, I like this, because I really liked the, the pieces that she was doing, just so happy. And I thought this would make a really nice, happy little tidbit tray set. But uh, Japan Lusterware Cup and Saucer in a really interesting and pretty pattern for three fifty. Yes, that was a good deal. So next up, this is a booth I always go to. They have loads of salt and pepper shakers, and I can usually find a few salt and pepper shakers whenever I go in there because they turn their stock fairly frequently. But this time I went over to take a look at uh, some plates. Now I had been over to this section digging out plates for tidbit trays the last time I had been there. And I had seen one of the plates, the little English china plate that you're going to see with the pheasant on it. And I thought about it and decided, well, I'll pick it up another time, you know, if it's still there. But I was able to get some really cute stuff. So let's take a look. Well, let's take a look at this. Three dollars, a very pretty little plate, and we are, um, English. Uh, we have a, a Japanese design overall, a fat little pheasant. I like it. This, also, three dollars. This is a little, uh, Chinese vase. You can see how small it is in my hand. This one is not going to make it to my Etsy shop, but it's definitely going out of my Etsy shop. One of my frequent buyers collects Asian porcelain and small vases, and I'm seeing a little thank you for your frequent patronage gift here. Um, Japanese saucers, $2 a piece. They're coming as well. Yet that little pheasant plate, it, it, it's English china in a very Japanese design. And I just thought it was, um, it was not a plate actually, it's a saucer. I thought it was just really nice. And 
I, I like birds. Birds sell. People like birds. Birds make people happy for some reason. I don't know what it is, but I thought that pheasant was great, and I love the colors. The Japan pieces, blue and white, the plates are different sizes. One was a little smaller than the other. One was a little thinner than the other. They have the same design on it. And I have a lot of blue and white plates, and so that's probably going to go into my tidbit tray stash for blue and white tidbit trays. Um, but for the Japan saucers were $2 each. The little Chinese vase was $3, and the little pheasant plate was also $3. And as I mentioned, the little vase is coming home with me. That's getting set aside. One of my frequent buyers at my Etsy shop likes Chinese porcelain and little miniature vases. And I like to be able to find things that I know people, um, that I know my buyers will like. Not necessarily to throw in my Etsy shop, but that's going to get wrapped up, that's going to get packed away, and that is going to go off as a thank you gift. Because you really need to acknowledge your customers, and frankly, this is a very easy way to do it. So, that's it for the last Bedford trip. It was a short one. Uh, I didn't have as much time as I would have liked. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, by the time you see this, I will have gone back to Bedford. I will have had an opportunity to check out all the depression glass in that glassware shop. And perhaps you'll recall from the last time I was there, everything was 20% off. So hopefully we'll have some bargains. All right. I will see you all tomorrow. Meantime, have a terrific day.